Hi everyone, my name is Lam Wing Guerlis and I'm a makeup artist and I'm proud to be part of the Stand Together Glam Together event. Raising funds for the NHS to say thank you for all their hard work during the COVID-19. It certainly hasn't been an easy one and I've been up and down mentally, but I've really slowed down and focused on the future, spend more time, quality time, my friends and my family and really aligning myself into how to make things better for the future. So I want to say thank you for sending all your questions in and hopefully you'll be able to walk away with some tips. So, how to prep your skin before makeup? Now there's loads of different situations depending what you do. So if you're a makeup artist, then for me it's always asking about the client if they're allergic to anything. Before makeup, most people would have done their own skincare routine. So it's really important to make sure that the skin is not oversaturated with product in order to get a good base. So some basic tips generally, what I like to do is obviously cleanse, tone, moisturize. Now, if you're doing it on yourself, you will know what you're allergic to and what products you should use. But because you're gonna do makeup afterwards, it's really essential that it's not really thick, not too oily, and has not too much product. Otherwise, your makeup's not gonna sit very well. Or you have to give yourself a bit of time in between before you apply your makeup. So if I'm on a shoot, or generally if I'm doing my own makeup before I go out, I usually give myself at least 10 to 20 minutes in skincare prep. Something like Celesta Beauty is one of my all-time favorites. If I've got acne or if there's any skin problems, the Correct and Calm is very good at calming the skin down instantly before makeup. There's also a five minute primer that I love to use and it's because it gives a radiance to the skin. This is also by Celesta and I love, the, I love using it because I've seen it for myself, I've seen instant results and it really happens within five, 10 minutes. The reason why I use face masks is because it is soothing, but also plumping, hydrating, and you can see the effects overall in the skin. You can also use an eye roller to make sure that you're smoothing out these areas and just waking up the skin. Also another technique is to moisturize, concentrating all these areas around the eye and lifting upwards to get the circulation moving so your skin is alive. It's really important to think about the situation. If it's going out makeup, if it's red carpet, if it's for a photo shoot, if it's for a wedding, all these things need to be considered because not just one product does the trick. It's all different and a combination of products. So it's really important to dissect the skin before you just apply anything. I really think it's important to also use a primer. So, you know, once you've done your skincare, if you've got loads of moisturizer on, sometimes a primer can make it roll off. So it's really important to look at your ingredients, whether it's silicone base or it has too much oil. It's really important to think about all these and answer the questions. I love to use um, the Benefit Pore Primer I also love to use Smashbox. I like to use MAC, silicone primer. But again, these are all different options that you have depending on the skin. So you can see there isn't one hero way of prepping your skin before makeup. It's all about addressing the situation and the skin type. Okay, best products for contouring. I love to do a few different ways of contouring. One is by using like a tanning system, like Amanda Harrington, for example. If you just come back from holiday or you just want a simple glow, you don't want makeup on the skin, then using a tanning system can help. Just using it, a few drops on a brush and then just buffing it into one, two, three, and then just a bit all over and just keep concentrating on pushing it towards the hairline. This is a beautiful way of creating something very natural. Another way also is to use different concealers and foundations. So mainly I like to use stick um, concealers like Bobbi Brown, for example. Um, try and choose three colors, a light, medium, dark. There's lots of tutorials out there, but the main thing is to make sure that it looks like skin. So try and avoid layering too too much 
because you don't want it moving all around. It's really good to build it up slowly and work it into those areas. So those areas would be around your cheek area, on the bone, into the hairline, down the nose, and obviously around the jawline. Okay, so when it comes to my blush and contour, I like to call it like a three-step system. So it's blush, contour, and bronze. So for example, when it comes to the cheeks, I like to use a cream blush. So you can use something like Daniel Sandler Watercolor Blush. It's a stain, Glossier. There is so many brands out there that have beautiful blush colors. And the trick is to use the stain just around the apples of your cheeks on the side so you get a lovely little highlight shape before you contour. When you're contouring, I love to use mainly um, Charlotte Tilbury, Tom Ford, Revolution Pro. There's lots of those palettes that have got contour and highlight that makes it very easy to work with. So on top of your blush, you want to contour high up and into the hairline, but you don't need to stretch out the color or everything too much. Just work with your shape and just aim it high. At the same time, what I then like to do is to blend it all together using a bronzer. So the bronzer is not on top of your blush, but more in the hairline and fusing it together. So again, it's a three step system. The number three around here across your, your forehead, underneath your jawline, and then down your nose if you want to. That's for the most flawless way of doing contouring. But then don't forget the highlight. So your highlight, it's really important that it's not too glittery, not too shimmery, because after a while, when your skin fuses everything together, it'll become too reflective, so you look really oily. Having the right brushes as well for contouring is really important. Try and get something that has an angle to it, or something that you know that you can work to control. The big brushes mainly for me are for more of the bronzing and for blending. I like to use an angle brush for my contouring and then a big brush then for my bronzing and then a small brush or a flat brush for sweeping a highlight or the cheek colour. As a top tip for me, once I've done my cream and my powders, I always try and apply a little bit more of the blusher colour in powder on top. This for me sets the cream and makes it last longer. And also you get a lot more dimension as well in the skin. When the skin eats up everything, the cream and the powders, it does last long, but also it does look very natural. How I create a perfect cat eye that will last. Now, usually this depends on the type of skin and eye shape that somebody has. Some people have more oily lids. I had definitely have one and more droopy eyelids. So you have to bear this in mind first. If someone has more oily lids, then to prep, use concealer and then set with powder. And then what I like to do is use an angle brush and just dip it into a normal eyeshadow, whether it's black or white or any color that you like. If you're doing a black cat eyeliner, then use black. And I just use the powder and I angle and I shape what I like. Then I fill it in using a cake eyeliner. So a cake eyeliner is again with the brush and it's creamy. Now what I love to use is the MAC Black Track or Shiseido because I find out of the two, um, they both allow you to work quick, um, give you time for blending and to rub off any mistakes, but also they last. And then to get the perfect black of black on top of that, I like then to use a liquid liner and some of my favorite eyeliners because of the brushes and how it feels on my eyes and how it works on the clients and I know that they work. My top favorites is the MAC liquid liners, the Pat McGrath and also Rimmel. So there is a lot of variation, lots of great um, eyeliners out there that you can use. But the main thing is the technique that I like to use to make sure that it doesn't smudge or it lasts a lot longer. Battling dark circles underneath the eye, the products and technique that I like to use. Because the skin underneath the eye is so sensitive, it's really important not to use heavy products and not to layer too much. So what I like to start off with is generally like a cooling eye patch. This can give me five minutes or 10 minutes, depending. It helps reduce the swelling. Also, I like to combine either a depuffing cream 
or an anti-puffness serum again using a eye roller which is again really cooling which you can massage and help the blood circulation around your eyes before adding your concealer what i recommend is by adding light to your skin so by using the illuminating foundation or adding a little bit more of a highlighter in with your foundation it really does illuminate and add light to your skin when you're using your concealer if you're using a liquid concealer obviously you can just dab it on and use your beauty blender but while you're trying to cover dark circles i recommend that you have a more of a stick concealer or something that has a bit of a thicker consistency and mix it in with your foundation and at least two shades lighter if you mix the both in and just tap it around the eye shape in this area of lack of v it will add light to your skin and brighten you can also use highlighters on the outer side of your corner and on the inner corner of your eye and this will also elevate and brighten and deflect to make sure that your dark circles are not too prominent how to even out rosy cheeks? What I like to use first is an anti-redness cream. This is my base layer and acts like a primer before I use a foundation. It's really important to use a foundation that is like your skin and is the same color. So a tinted moisturizer is best because then you can layer on another layer if you have to. You wanna use a concealer that's close to your foundation color to semi-block the areas that are red on your cheekbones by using a stippling brush, a foundation brush, or a beauty blender. Just tap in those areas very lightly. Try not to drag on the skin, because again, this brings the redness back up. So by tapping and stippling, you can then cover that area a lot easier. You can afford to go a little bit heavier, because what I like to do then is re-add the blush. You don't have to use the same color blush, but something close, like a little stain or something that's in the opposite family color, a bit more of a coral, it can help. And just reapply so it still looks real and doesn't look fake. So it's really important to be able just to add a tiny bit on the flush, but not all over your apples, just on the side so you have a bit of color. So if your redness does come through, it will just morph in together and look natural, but it won't look as bright. Then use a bronzer or contrasting color again for your contouring and to bronze. Make sure you tap and powder and try not to react too much with the skin. Because you have rosy cheeks, it's because your skin is sensitive. So it's really important not to stipple and not to massage the skin too much. Now that leads me to the end of my questions. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for tuning in and don't forget to donate. I will leave some recommendations below with this video and I hope to see you soon.